Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the mentoring hour. Uh, we'll begin our mentoring hour with a word of prayer. So can I request one of our um, uh, students to lead us in prayer, please? Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful mentoring hour. God, I have compassion on all the participants. Kindly utilize the message giving person, Pastor J. Kumar Isaiah. I have compassion, Lord teach us regarding missions. We want to learn more and more about the missions and to minister this generation. Lord Holy Spirit, take control from starting to ending. Utilize thine servants mightily and help us to learn about missions. We pray in Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Venkatesan, for uh, leading us in prayer. Uh, so during the mentoring hour, one of our faculty members will share on a specific topic. Uh, after that, we'll have time uh, for you all to ask any questions or seek clarifications about what was shared. You're also welcome to ask questions related to life, uh, ministry, or anything from the course that uh, you know, you're attending. Uh, and our faculty uh, who are present will do our best to uh, provide answers to your questions. Uh, this morning, we have Pastor Jay Kumar Isaiah to share on the topic of missions. Uh, over to Pastor Jay Kumar. Thank you, uh, Selena. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning for joining in today. So today, uh, we are going to take some time to look at a very interesting topic, which is missions, which is really central to um, uh, the, our faith and something that uh, each of us um, are well acquainted with, I think, as, a, as believers. But um, yeah, so let's uh, look at an overview of missions, what missions is. We'll take some time to do that. We may not get into too much of details, but uh, just an overview of what missions is, right? OK. Um, Okay. Um, but... Right. Okay, so we're going to yeah. So we'll look at, uh, you know, just by looking at some of these terms, identifying these terms and talking about these terms and seeing what missions is and what it's all about. Right. OK. So at the outset, if we would have to look at what missions is, you know, there is a you know, dictionary definition and uh, the dictionary would say a mission is, is really an important task or an assignment which is given to a person or a group of people right so it's it's not exclusively used in the christian faith it can be it's a very secular term uh, you can be on a mission uh, and you can say that okay i'm on a mission i'm going here and i'm doing this um, so it can be anything it it need not be exclusively used um, as a christian you know as a as a believer um but when we get a biblical understanding of what missions is when we look at uh, scripture, when we look, go through the book of Acts and, uh, and uh, also the Great Commission, we see that uh, uh, missions is to share the gospel with those who have never heard it. Okay, So we're sharing the gospel to those who have never heard the gospel. And also it is, secondly, it is to disciple and equip believers. So disciple meaning uh, teaching others uh, the, the instructions, the, the word of God, uh, and to disciple meaning to uh, teach them to follow, right? 
along with us to teach them to follow the Lord, the principles, the precepts, and the person of the Lord Jesus. It is also to equip believers. Equip means to train. Equip is to, you know, uh, uh, to train them to do, maybe to teach, train them to demonstrate, train them to um, train the believer to evangelize and so on, to minister. Um, to what end? So that they can do the same thing. They can go out, share the gospel, equip other believers, and which causes uh, church growth. And you say church growth, not just a local church, but the body of believers, right? the, where the kingdom of God is advancing and people are being added to the kingdom, which cr uh, causes growth. And when we say, typically when we talk about missions, it's about our own community, the community of believers where one is part of. right? And the third one, third aspect of missions is also to empower, to support, and to work with those who are engaged in missions. Right? So three things, to share the gospel with those who have never heard it, to disciple and equip believers, to empower, support, and work with those who are engaged in missions. So, so missions is not just about uh, going to a place where people have never heard the gospel. It is also about going to a place where people have heard the gospel have heard the, heard the gospel sorry and to strengthen their strengthen them to train to encourage them and also it means to support the work um, of missions right okay so why is missions important why is it important to a believer why is it important to the church first thing that we see is that god loves all people okay that is something that we see john 3 16 god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God loves all believers. And God's desire is that whoever believes in him should not perish. So this overwhelming love for God, love of God for people is something that needs to be that needs to be told. This is this important truth is something that needs to be shared. So missions is important. Um, Another reason why missions is important is because this is something that is close to God's heart. Right? We see First Timothy 2, verse 4 says, Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Right? It is good, it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And uh, the verses preceding that talk about prayer, prayer to those in authority and so on. But he desires all men. Men used there is anthropos, meaning humanity. He desires humanity to be saved and to come to the saving knowledge of the truth. So this is, this is important to God. So this is on God's heart, right? The third thing why missions is important is because there is no other plan for salvation. Acts 4 and verse 12 says that, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So if you look at the enormity, the, the importance of it, we see that there is no other way. I, the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So there is no other way by which people's destinies can be changed. Right? There is no other way by which people can be saved. So Jesus is the only way. He is the only Savior, which is why missions is important. Um, the fourth reason why missions is important is because of the Great Commission. The Lord Jesus, or what we can call as the Great Command, He said, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, uh, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, of course. So he's saying, go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptize them, teach them, and uh, to all the things that I have commanded you. So we see that it is really, the commission is also a command for all believers, right? Okay, why is missions important? Another reason is because the need is great. Now, what you can see on screen is, um, is what we call as the 10 by 40 window, right? Let me just make it bigger. 10 by 40 window, um, which is, you know, if you take the globe, it's uh, 10 degree north latitude and 10 degree, uh, uh, 40 degree north latitude. So it's this imaginary line or box where most of the unreached nations are. So the need is really great. If you see, you know, from the West, you could see some of the African nations, which are um, probably Islamic in nature and they're 
worldview. Then we, we see the Middle East um, and then Eastern Europe, like Turkey, and, and then you know um, some of the nations closer to our neighbors, uh, uh, closer to India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, and also our own nation, India, Nepal, and then we see China and East Asia, uh, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, and Far East Asia, and so on, like Taiwan, Korea, Japan. So we see that, um, yes, the need indeed is great because um, we see that they have yet to be reached. Right? Some of the difficult places, they are yet to be reached. Okay. Um, another reason why missions is important uh, is also, you know, when we look at the consider the need, look at our own nation. Right, we are looking at India, and uh, it says uh, the statistics is some of the latest ones. May probably it's uh, a year old. Um, it says that there are people groups, right? two thousand two hundred and seventy-two people groups in our nation in India. People groups would mean someone who is uh, who has the same language, uh, they have the same culture, um, and uh, you know ethnic. These are ethnic groups, right? So even within language, they could be different dialects and different culture and so on. So they could be speaking Hindi, but then they could belong to different people groups. So there are 2,272 identified people groups. And if you see unreached, uh, people groups are 2,041. So when we say unreached, it means that there is no Christian witness. There is no Christian community. There is no active, like um, indigenous, like from their own community, there are not enough believers. To, to do the work of ministry, right? To have a self-sustaining church and so on. So there are 2,041 such unreached people groups. Right? And if you look at the population of India, which is like um, uh, 14 billion, and we are the most populous nation in the world, we have overtaken China. And there also the unreached uh, numbers are 13.68. Right? So it's like almost 95% of our nation is unreached. And of course, there are minimally reached and superficially uh, reached and so on. They could be nominal believers and so on. But then we see that the need is great. Right? So the missions is important. So next we see like who is commissioned for missions? You know, Who is it that is called, invited, and really commanded uh, for missions? It is every believer. Right. Every believer, everyone who's a follower of the Lord Jesus, who, who's a student of the Word of God, who's a learner of the principles of God and you know principles of the Lord, and also following, um, uh, actively following the person of the Lord Jesus. Right. So we see some of the marks of the disciple. A disciple is one who follows the Lord willingly. Right. A disciple is one who follows the Lord despite the cost. You know, um, James and John, they just left their boats and they followed the Lord. They followed uh, him willingly. Um, uh, and we see that uh, someone who follows despite the cost, like we see examples like Paul, who's saying that, you know, I'm ready to die, I'm ready to be bound. Um, and whatever cost, he's willing to follow the Lord. The disciple lives for the Lord. He's... Uh, uh, he also is, he or she is not ashamed of the gospel, where Paul says, you know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because of the power of God. So these are some of the marks of the disciple, not just a believer, but a disciple, right? And uh, secondly, who is commissioned for missions? A disciple who's walking with the Lord's authority and power. And in fact, this is for every disciple, every believer in the Lord Jesus, everyone who wants to follow the Lord Jesus. The authority and the power is available and is it's actually vested, right? Acts chapter one and verse eight, talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, says the Lord says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And in other places also the Lord gives us the authority, the spiritual authority and dominion. Luke chapter 10 and verse 9, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt you. So he's given us. And why? Because the mission or God's mission is a spiritual battle that requires spiritual authority and power. So a disciple who walks with the Lord's authority and power, which is available for every disciple. And also we see that it's a disciple where for the disciple, there's prayer preceding 
any task of any task of missions. Acts chapter 4, verse 31 says, When they had prayed, the place they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So you see the sequence. They prayed, they were all filled with the power, with the Holy Spirit, and they an outflow of that was the word of God being spoken with boldness. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Um, this is in the church in Antioch, and we have Paul, uh, uh, Saul, Barnabas, and others who are there, uh, Lucius, Niger, and so on, um, some prophets and teachers, right? So they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So they are ministering unto the Lord, they are praying, they're fasting, and and then begins their mission. Right? We see that soon after that, Paul and Barnabas start go on their first missionary journey, establishing churches. Right. So, how can you and I engage in missions? Um, it is we can engage in missions, meaning participate in missions through uh, sharing the gospel and planting of churches and starting a community of believers. Um, uh, planting churches. So we might have the question, you know, uh, can a believer, can a disciple, can a believer plant churches? You know, yes, we see in scripture that all believers can plant churches. We see in the book of Acts that, uh, you know, Philip, uh, he moved from uh, Jerusalem to Samaria, and uh, we see that he went, shared the gospel, uh, uh, the church was born. People, uh, people came to the Lord, they started gathering together, and then Peter and John go there and to strengthen the work with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and so on. So we see this, and even in the church in Antioch, we don't know who started it because they were believers who came there because of the dispersion from Jerusalem. They traveled all the way here, and we don't even know their names, but they started, they planted the church, and the third church in Antioch became a thriving church, um, you know, uh, sending out church where uh, Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Silas, and they all went from there on the missionary's journey. So um, church planting, yes, uh, uh, we can indulge in that, engage in that. Secondly, by strengthening new believers and local churches. So we can go to uh, churches, new believers. If there are new believers, we can strengthen. Uh, we can travel. We can go and see, um, and we can strengthen the churches. And of course, um, we need to partner with we need to get the permission and so on and um and do that uh, we can also minister to the physical needs of communities right so we see the church in antioch sent aid to the church or the believers in jerusalem right we see the macedonian believers the corinthian church paul encouraging them to give uh, in order to uh, help the believers so as uh, you know this is also participating in missions maybe there are physical needs maybe they you know they need something maybe there are equipment maybe there's something that the church needs um so supporting uh, the local church is also one way of engaging in missions um fourthly is also tent making maybe you're you're a working professional you know you maybe you're a business person uh, maybe you are you know called to the marketplace uh, that is not a second class you know mission field right it is the heart of god wherever people are so you being in the marketplace, you being in engaging in business, you know you can engage in missions. Wow, well, how you know, your business can be your business can be a mission itself. We know of uh, many corporates who are run by you know with this vision that my vision, mi business uh, is a mission. So they tithe into the church, they support the work of ministries and and so on. Right, um, five prayer. Like definitely, all of us are called to pray. We know that. It's a spiritual work. It's a spiritual battle. Though there are many expressions of, you know, physical work and hard labor involved, but it's a, it's, it starts with prayer. So we can pray. Um, and there's a wonderful resource called Joshua Project, where you know, prayer points are there, daily prayer points and prayer needs around the world uh, for missionaries, difficult mission fields, and the persecuted church, and so on. So we can pray, uh, pray as individuals, pray as a group, pray regularly. Right? We can also partner with those who are working in the mission field if there are if you know of mission organizations um uh, and then like vishwani and and so so many other uh, campus crusade and so many other mission fields so mission organizations we can world vision uh, we can partner 
with the mission workers and also resource them, support them in prayer and and financial needs and so on. Um, but really, you know, uh, lastly, if you can look at you know, how can we engage in missions, we can do it in so many ways through technology, through social media, uh, through bringing relief whenever there is a natural calamity. You know, there's an opportunity for missions to bring in relief, to bring in the Christian witness there uh, through education, right? Um, where we can even start a maybe an English course or a computer course, and and that can be a starting point um, to share the gospel. So through education, through Bible translation. There are many languages where the Bible is um, not in the language of the people, and therefore, if if you know one is good in language and good in this this uh, skill, the Bible it's a lifelong work. We know that. So Bible translation and also medical missions, you know, taking medical aid to those in need, and we know can partner with hospitals like EHA group of hospitals, and and there are you know many. Um, a part of places where the need is really felt. Okay, so um, finally, you know, this is something that we can do. This is the call uh, for all um, for all of us. Uh, you know, Romans chapter ten, verses fourteen and fifteen says, "How shall they call on him in, in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a?" preacher and how shall they preach unless they are sent so the, this is a call for all of us to go or if you are unable to go probably in that particular season of life we can send meaning we can you know help others to go and do the work or we can pray right and these are all three are equally important and um, so the question paul um, you know the god asks us is this how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? So this is truly you know, the call for all of us, call for missions. Thank you. Um, if there are any questions, we can take questions. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar, for sharing those uh, eye-opening statistics and also valuable insights on missions. Uh, now the time is open for all of you to ask any questions or uh, even seek clarification about what was shared. Uh, you're also welcome to ask questions uh, related to life, uh, ministry, or anything from the course that you've been attending. And our faculty are here, and Pastor Jay Kumar is here as well, and we'll do our best to provide uh, helpful answers to your questions. Uh, please feel free to uh, type your questions in the chat section, um, or you can unmute your mics and ask your questions. Yes, please feel free to uh, ask. You can unmute your mics and ask your questions. If you need further clarifications, you can ask that as well. Or you can even post your questions in the chat. Yes, Daniel? Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jukumar. Thank you, Pastor Salim. Um, I want to ask a question. Um, if uh, it is right to pay a tithe to a missionary or to a church, or, or either you can partner with a missionary or you pay tithe to a missionary. Thank you, Daniel, uh, for your question. Pastor Jay Kumar? Yeah, so the question is, uh, can I, in, in, in a way to support the, either the mission organization, the missionary, um, can I use my tithe to do that, right? Is that your question, Daniel? Yes, yes, yes. Can I use my tithe to do that? Or oh, Yes, sir. that's the question. That's right. The question. Okay, so, um, well, from what we see in Scripture, we see that the tithe goes to the local church that you are part of, um, where you are spiritually being fed. So we see that right through in Scripture, um, that the tithe is... Um, 
to, you know, it goes it, 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 the way the Lord instituted it. It was, of course, the temple, and so they had to tithe uh, one tenth, you know, which was the minimum uh, to, uh, and they did, did that. But we need we see that there are many local churches. There's no one church or one temple. We have many local churches. So whichever local church that you are connected to, which you are part of, you can, you know, this is. Uh, the scriptural thing to do would be to tithe there, right? And over and above that, uh, whatever we can, uh, which we can give, which the Bible calls as offerings, you know, we can support the work of ministry, uh, either in the local church or or otherwise, missionaries and missionary organizations. Now, now this is what we see in scripture, uh, and uh, yeah, we know that uh, you know if for some some reason. You know the finances are limited and and so on. Now, don't be under pressure. Right? It's a relationship with the Lord. Just engage with the Lord. Just pray. Ask the Lord, and and do as the Lord leads. But this is what we see in Scripture as a guideline to use our tithes for the local church and our offerings and anything over and above that for the work of missions. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Daniel, and thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, anyone else has any questions? Okay, uh, we have a question from Jack and Joel. Uh, if we are burdened for a particular people group, however, we do not know their language, for example, Kannada or Marathi, how much can we invest, minister to them with what we have or know, especially praying and sharing God's word? Um, can we work as a team with the local church uh, elders? Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely knowing the language uh, is a great advantage builds bridges and you can you know share directly um, however uh, we can also you know uh, go with the help of a translator if you're doing a short-term mission you can go with someone who knows the language and you can share and uh, uh, obviously the other option is to learn the language and we know of many missionaries uh, who came to India who did that. Right? William Carey is one who who learned the language of the people, and then uh, and he learned, learned it so uh, you know thoroughly that he could translate. And of course, he used the help of a Sanskrit pundit initially, but then he learned the language and translated the Bible into so many Indian languages. So, yeah. So these are some things that we can do, and. Um, I've not personally used Google Translate. Apparently, that you can actually do a you know online uh, translation, word for word or line for line. I don't know how effective that is, you know, speech. So that can also be one way, I guess, we can use. But um, yeah, so these are several ways. Definitely, you know, if it's going to be a like a meeting, uh, an organized meeting or an informal meeting, definitely we can have people who know the language with us who can translate. And and we can partner with a local church over there, uh, maybe in the, in the state that you're considering, the place that you're considering, and um, use, uh, you know, take the help of the believers there in order to translate. I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you, Jack, and queer question. Thank you, Pastor Jakes. I think we could, you could also uh, pray for them, uh, you know, uh, and pray for the people who are ministering to these uh, people group. I think prayer is a powerful uh, tool that we can use to support uh, mission work. Uh, thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar, um, for answering that question. Over to Philip's question. Uh, for doing missions, do we need any gifts uh, from God, I think? Maybe talking about... Yeah, so um, if your question is about, you know, do I need any special skills or abilities? Well, if, 
you know in whatever season of life you are in a you know, phase of life and you if you have skills and abilities god will definitely use that um and you can use that as let's say you you for example i'm just saying you know maybe you can teach a particular language and if you want to start a you know like a tuition center or doing an online you know uh, teaching of that language uh, you can use that skill and ability um, definitely as a as building of bridge and you can use that in missions for sure or maybe a technical skill like computer skills or whatever you can use that um, do we need any special abilities you know like uh, i think with the maybe the focus we can we can compare ourselves to others who are skilled and gifted and we many times we do that and say i'm not like that person therefore you know i can't be in missions or we focus on certain skills and abilities well god is able to the lord is able to um, uh, empower us and use us uh, the way we are right so that's how he did it right through scripture people who are available and he used them right people were we got all kinds of people people who are highly intellectual and academic in nature like paul we have you know people in fishing business like peter and uh, we have so many like tax collector like matthew and and so on like you know varied cross section of people god used you know irrespective of their ability or lack of it so god will use it use us and of course we pray make ourselves available and we can also upskill you know upgrade our skills which is required for that particular mission field we can do that uh, anyone else who wants to add please uh, go ahead um, or any other pastor teacher faculty yeah anyone else uh, faculty would you like to help answer philip's uh, question uh, this may be and um... you know uh, so the uh, main thing about missions is to to have a heart for the people uh, that's something very important um, so you know um, unlike say a traveling evangelist which of course uh, an itinerant speaker they go from place to place they move around uh, and so they're always speaking to different groups of people but whereas in missions really it requires commitment to a people and a place uh especially you know, of course there are short term missions where you go for a few months or maybe a couple of years but when you're talking about missions for long term uh that requires a lot of commitment to the people and the place uh without that you know um uh, the work cannot really be established um so so of course like we saying like pastor jacob mentioned that there are different things that we do in missions different things but uh when you're planning or considering being a, on on uh, being a missionary to a people uh, that requires it so um i think that would be uh, a very important starting point to know that that's the place god wants you to be in and that's the people that god wants you to reach uh when you're talking about long term missions Uh, short term missions is of course is different you're going for a couple of days to a few weeks months uh, that's different but even there you've got to have a heart for the people uh, other practical things is to be willing to really adapt to people's culture and you know things so uh, some people can adapt some people just don't adapt you yeah. know so just asking god for that grace that be lord when i go to these people i want to be like them a great example is uh, what paul said in first corinthians 9 right so he said to the jew i became like a jew to the to those outside the law I became like outside the lot i become all things to all people so the ability to really step into their world uh to connect with them at their level is so important uh, so that when we go we don't try to impose our views or our culture on them but we go and we step into their world and then bring the gospel or bring the word of god to them so these kind of you know you call them graces that that we need uh, when we are doing missions is that to what's been spoken <laughs> thank you pastor ashish um thank you pastor jay kumar for answering philip's question i hope philip uh, that helped uh, please let us know if you have any further questions on what you've asked uh, moving on to maui's question please comment on the very popular church mission trips that sound more tourist uh, 
touristic than uh, Bible oriented. Uh, they're very common today and missionaries always take personal credit. Okay, uh, I guess it's an observation and uh, well, it, I, I guess it's, a, it's something that could be there where uh, it's more lighthearted and uh, but even that i just want to say that people i mean uh, people can be uh, exposed to the need in certain places and uh, of course it depends on the vision of that particular church um, and vision for that missionary uh, trip uh, mission trip that they are making and so on so um yeah uh, i would say uh, we would we need to get to the heart of what missions is all about and maybe it depends on the uh, on the age group also maybe it's they just want to expose the people to missions and maybe that's the first thing that uh, first few trips and that is uh, you know I, I know that's possible and yeah but that is not the be all and end all we know when a, a church can move from that you know uh, 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 into what um, uh, more serious missions maybe short term missions can be of that nature but uh, yeah it depends on the leadership of course and the vision and uh, yeah yeah i would uh, yeah but nothing more than that uh it's a, yeah it is a real observation yes yeah i think we can uh, pray for such churches that they would be aligned to uh, uh what the biblical mission focus is and you know they will do um uh, as god is calling them to you know spread the gospel uh, and to refocus and to realign to what the Bible says. Yes, I hope that helped Maui. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, we'll move on to Prince's question. Uh, what are the things we should be considering when planting for missions or outreach? Um, so can I ask any one of our other faculty to answer this, please? Anyone else? What are the things we should be considering when planning for missions and outreach? Pastor Nancy, would you like to share? Yes, yes Pastor Selena. Uh, yes, thank you, Prince, for that question. So what are the things that we must be considering uh, when planning for missions and outreach? Uh, a couple of things, Prince. Firstly, to understand the need of that place and that community, as Pastor Jaikumar was sharing, um, whether it's about sharing the gospel, whether it's about strengthening uh, the believers there, you know, whether it's about strengthening the pastors there, meeting their needs. So we need to answer that question. You know, why is it that uh, we are going there? And so once we are clear about that, um, you know, we may have to look at the resources. We may have to um, uh, think about who are the people who are going to go there and how well they are equipped and we may have to work on equipping them uh, and uh, apart from these things um, there's the the primary thing is spiritual preparation so the team that's going there uh, we we would need to help them prepare themselves in prayer in um, uh, you know our, like if they're going to share the word of God, then uh, to be able to study the word and prepare their hearts to minister. Uh, so all that sort of spiritual preparation is another aspect to look into. Um, and uh, one of the other uh, important things is to understand the context and understand the uh, the. Uh, you know, if I may put it this way, like the government rules uh, pertaining to that particular place, because we know that as we are traveling to a new uh, region, it it has its own uh, system it has its own laws uh, and so when we're doing things we need to do things in in a proper way um, such that you know we we um, we honor uh, the the law of the land of, in that place and we we um, yeah, we don't offend uh, our uh, community that we are ministering to. So, uh, you know, to just ensure that things are done well with excellence uh, in such a way that uh, people are ready to accept it. Um, and so when we when we work like this, uh, what happens is that we are able to make an impact uh, and in fact, a lasting impact uh, and uh, beyond beyond just the mission trip. Uh, I think another thing that we need to give thought to is um, uh, what what can 
come out of that mission trip you know if if there is a, something more um, that can continue in that place some other work that can continue because of the mission trip uh, and so you know we can consider ways of making that happen uh, so yeah just uh, some thoughts there and i i hope that's helpful and i leave it open for uh, other pastors thank you uh, pastor selina you're on mute Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, I'd just like to add that, uh, you know, uh, we need, uh, uh, you know, uh, clarity on what or, uh, you know, mention what is the calling or the vision of the, uh, uh, the mission trip or what you're planning, whether it's evangelism, uh, discipleship, or it is community service or, you know, pra meeting practical needs in that specific community, communicate that to uh, the team, prepare them so they know what is the vision, what is the goal. And of course, like Pastor Nancy said, uh, prayer and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, language barriers that are there uh, if you need any translation services or materials that needs to uh, uh, need to be translated how you're going to uh, you know ensure that is done and how if you need uh, you know translators uh, that also needs to be worked on and of course you know um, budgeting and fundraising also is another aspect that we need to keep in uh, mind uh, thank you pastor nancy for answering uh, prince's question i hope prince that uh, uh, helped uh, we'll move on to sri raj kumar's question i'm already in a mission in uh, uh, himachal pradesh but still yet to start a church here what are the things I need to do as I'm confused, kindly, uh, uh, you know, I need guidance, so. Yeah, I think prob probably Pastor, Pastor Ashish can uh, answer it in much depth, but I just want to make a comment that just to ask the Lord, you know, the Lord has uh, obviously you've gone there on missions, uh, Sri Raj, maybe as a short term or maybe as a frequent, uh, you know, maybe two, three times in a year and so on. But is the Lord really calling you to that people, to that people group, uh, to be there to work among them? Or is it more like a strengthening work? You know, that's something that you need to ask because uh, to plant a church, of course, um, you know, you we can find a leader, raise a leader among the group of people who are gathering there and, and see if, um, you know, and raise a leader and see that if, is that, um, does that leader have a heart and does that leader have the you know uh, have the passion and is that the vision of the lord uh, and and so we can appoint leaders uh, appoint a leader to take care of the work but if it is to uh, you know if it is to for you to go there and be there uh, you can you can wait on the lord and ask um, and get clarity yeah. uh, pastor if you want to add Um, yeah, um, so yes, uh, uh, yeah, like the, the main thing is like what you feel called to do there. And so if, if that is clear, like, you know, are you called to plant a church? Are you called to do, you know, what has, why did God send you there? Why did you go there? Uh, if we answer that question, we could uh, definitely help. So uh, if you can send an email to us. Um, uh, we're just telling us, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what, you feel the God has called you there and just reach out, send it, send it to the Bible College email. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's admin at Bible College, apcbiblecollege.org. So maybe Nancy can type it in the chat. Just send an email there and then, you know, pass an answer. Somebody, one of us can, uh, if you can give us your number also, uh, we can call you and talk to you about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ashish and Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, uh, we'll move on to uh, Biju's question. There is urbanization happening everywhere, especially in India. Bangalore hosts 1.4 crore people, which uh, translates to 1% of Indian population of 140 crore. Uh, so concentrating uh, cities for missions is going to be the new norm. So is concentrating cities for missions going to be the new norm? So. Mr. Jay Kumar, can you help, please? Yeah. So the traditional view of missions is that I go to you know a, a village or a rural area and then do the work of missions. 
but um, studies have shown there's there's a lot of movement of people from the rural areas uh, into cities because of work employment studies and and to make a living and so on so in fact um, you know some studies state that by 2050 you know 68 percent of the world's population will be in urban centers so there is that movement there so to answer that question yes you know there is a need for missions in uh, urban centers or cities and um, and that um, that is you know people are already engaged in it and uh, yes it will continue right so there is a need there uh, for urban missions um, secondly that question is about is tent making a part of uh, missionary work missions uh, right and uh, when do we get into full-time missions as a missionary and so on so i uh, just want to um, address that as well and say that you know when we say tent making we're saying you know um, typically uh, it comes from what paul did paul was uh, engaged in making tents he was a tent maker along with and we see him doing that along with priscilla and akila and and uh, it, paul says that he supported himself and the team um, through the work of his hands, through what he did. So he engaged in business uh, and, you know, making and selling it and then out of that revenue, using that for the missionary work. So he did that. So so that's what we mean when we say tent making. And so, you know, well, if the God's call for some of us is to be tent makers in the sense that, okay, this is God's call to be in the marketplace. So it can be a, you know, some aspect of some skill, something. And now this tent making is what really makes us re relevant to the community, you know, to the people where God has placed us. So if you are a working professional, if you're a software person, if you're a doctor, if you're a, you know, you, you are actually, you have access to that community um, because of that tent making skill, right? Because of all that, that you have to offer. So that's a bridge and that gives you access into people's lives and that gives us the opportunity to be an example there. So, so we can look at tent making that way, you know, as a full-time mission as well, right? Because your question is, you know, do, when do I get out of that and get into you know, actual full-time missions? But I just wanted to say that, you know, that itself uh, can be God's call for a person. Right? I'm not saying specifically that it is for you, but then for a person, it could be that, right? And then, uh, of course, maybe God is calling uh, one out of that, out of the marketplace into what we see as, uh, you know, maybe itinerant ministry or even to go to another place, um, you know, uh, to a people group and to do the work there cross-culturally. Yes, God could do that. But even then, this tent making is a is an amazing bridge, you know, especially when it comes to nations, which are uh, very hostile to missions. You know, the tent making is like a is it gives you access. It's like that password. You know, people say, okay, if you got that skill, you can come, but you can't come in as a missionary. But when so. Um, and I know of a, a, fr a friend of mine who was actually wanted to go to North Korea, but then there's no way he could go and start a traditional church. But to teach. Uh, to teach language, you know, English, specifically in English, and also tech, technical skills. Um, yes, the doors are open. So he did many trips that way and could engage um, in missions. So yes, so I just wanted to share that. And if there's anyone else uh, you want to add, please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, anyone uh, else of our faculty would like to uh, share on Biju's questions. Pastor, I can ask you something about ministry. Sure, yes, go ahead, Pooja. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Good morning, praise the Lord. Pastor, uh, Pastor, one person is the pastor, is the, he's in uh, the ministry, but now he leaves the ministry because uh, God spoke to him. And uh, after he born, he born again, after 15 years, God spoke to him and uh, after that, God speak him. Then he told his pastor, uh, pastor, God spoke to me to do the ministry. So, the, and his pastors know everything. Then uh, he say, no, you can't uh, stop the Lord because you are his, you are in a ministry. The, then he say, no, but God spoke to me so very like you know, uh, every day God, God spoke to me leave this ministry and <laughs> do the uh, own ministry like you know. Then he said, no, you get angry. 
then pastor he crying that person he crying so much to god lord what i'm doing, doing what i do then god say don't don't uh, listen man voice listen the god voice and he pray and fast pastor because the uh, god spoke to him he, he very you know uh, he doing everything that ministry he is uh, working hard you know like uh, before ministry he reached he reached that place he doing everything he welcome the people in everything then god uh, use him very powerfully pastor and he pray like four hours six hours pray he uh, he give uh, very special time for god then after that then his pastor don he help him now he uh, doing on ministry pastor so it is he doing ministry now and but uh, god god doing uh, miracle things in his life pastor like healing deliverance prophecy and people are healed also everything so first time i was i want to ask you something means uh, that person doing wrong or correct pastor can tell me please Thank you for your question, Pooja. Uh, we've run out of time. Uh, we have to. Serena, can I? Uh, I'll just answer that. Yes. Uh, yeah, Pooja. So the the most important thing for any one of us is to obey God's call on our lives, and uh, you know, like Paul himself wrote the same thing in Galatians one fifteen to seventeen, where he said, uh, "I did not discuss my calling with flesh and blood, but he went and did what God wanted him to do." So just to answer your question. Um, Uh, it, it what this person has done is the right thing and the reason we can say it is because you see the fruit right jesus said in matthew 7 you'll know them by the fruit so what is the fruit lives are being saved a powerful ministry has been established and people are being touched so to answer your question yes this person did the right thing in obeying god and that's what we are all called to do yeah? thank you Thank you, Pastor. And he, he, that same Pastor, also Pastor before, uh, four, oh, sorry, six, uh, six years back, he prophesy, uh, that person, you will, uh, God will use you powerful, like you know, uh, healing gift, like prophecy, get that type of prophecy. He do, uh, he spoke, uh, prophesy in in his, uh, life. Then after that, all prophecies are fulfilled in her, uh, sorry, his life. Mm. So, so yeah, so. good boy, sir. Like we will try to close now. Okay, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Pastor. So, thank you, Pooja. Thank you, Pastor Ashish. Uh, thank you all for joining the mentoring hour. Uh, have a blessed day. God bless you. Thank you all.